So before the break, I talked about how do you know that you are still dealing with the aftermath of an abuse? And, and a few signs are just signs that may seem pretty obvious. Like you have a trouble, just trouble functioning normally at home or at work. You still suffer from nightmares or fears, anxiety, depression. You have these intrusive thoughts coming in, these images that you just cannot really shake off. You are maybe feeling that you're unable to have close relationships and, and maybe just jump from one relationship to the next without really ever finding what you're looking for. Can also end up in promiscuity and just having frequent one night stands. You may have the feeling that there are these triggers, just like I said about this horse, something just, you know, someone touches you immediately, you freeze or you cry or you feel like uh, the memory of being a small child and you just want to curl in a ball or you feel emotionally numb. You just feel like disconnected from others, having a sense that you don't belong or you use alcohol, drugs, shopping, eating, or other things just to make yourself somehow feel better, which is a form of numbing out. It's a form of filling yourself up because you feel whole, uh, feel like a void. There's something missing inside of you. So all of those things are symptoms that say, I, I need some help here. I need to look for answers. And the answers start with in. And if you need help, please reach out. And uh, I have uh, certainly worked with many survivors of abuse and my breakthrough program can help you to go to that subconscious, deeper level where the abuse is still stuck and help you to heal and resolve it. And there are certainly also many other avenues and ways for you to get professional support. So don't hesitate about that. But here are three things that I find are so effective and powerful to consider when it comes to healing abuse. And the three things is that you want to, first of all, acknowledge that you were actually the victim of abuse. Now, this sounds, you know, pretty much something you could say, well, of course, duh. No, unfortunately not. There's so many times that when people were abused, that A, they suppress that memory. And then it comes up, comes up maybe in a in acupuncture treatment or when someone gives you a massage or just spontaneously. And then you wonder, oh my God, what is that? Am I making this up? Does this come from another place? Is this something that my mind just watched in TV and now internalizes it? And so we just don't want to believe that something like this happen to us. And then maybe there is a little bit more digging and a little bit more suspicion. And then it maybe involves something in childhood and it may involve a relative or someone that we really don't want to be the abuser. And again, we try to shove it into a big black bag somewhere in our mind and don't want to deal with it. And there it lingers around. Studies show that when people do have an inclination that there is something that probably happened to them, there is a very, very high percentage that it actually did happen and that we just suppressed it until, or the mind suppressed it, until we are ready to deal with it, until we are ready to face that what still needs to be healed. And the other reason why we are not wanting to be uh, the, the victims of abuse is because it's often so confusing that naturally when you're abused, you, you wonder, well, why? Why did this happen? Why does this person do to me? And then the mind goes to, what's wrong with me? What did I do? Maybe this is my fault. Maybe I should have done something differently. And then there is this self-blaming and that feeling of guilt. That is not only the feeling of guilt that maybe comes up when you're considering your responsibility, which is zero, but when you're considering that maybe there is something you have done wrong, but there is also a subconscious absorption of the guilt that the abuser may have felt at the time of the abuse. I'm saying it again. We do, in the moments of trauma, just take 
all in. The subconscious is on a heightened alert and a heightened awareness. And it's almost as if it's absorbing like a sponge everything that's going on around it. And so when someone is feeling a strong sense of guilt or maybe hatred or some shame or whatever it is, because that's what comes up for the abuser, chances are that the person who is abused takes on those feelings and then internalizes them. I mean, we know that uh, we can smell, it has been proven, fear and anxiety, and I'm sure the subconscious can also pick up other emotions from others, such as this guilt and shame or hatred, and then we are unfortunately turning it against ourselves. So really staying in the mindset of, you know what, I need to admit and I need to accept that I have been victimized uh, is a really first step just to see that something happened to you that you need to now find a way to heal. You need to now take responsibility. And that's the second step. That's the second step that's really important to say, well, I was victimized, but I'm unwilling to remain the victim of what happened to me. I don't want to let what happened to me define me for the rest of my life. And that's a very challenging step because again, there is this confusion, there is this doubt, there's this questioning of, you know, was it my fault and so, but then there is also that survival pattern that I talked about that makes it so much more yeah, likely that we are staying in that, okay, I'm a survivor of something terrible than saying, no, this is something that I can actually become bigger from and maybe also not let myself live under that shadow from whatever this person did to me for the rest of my life. And that is something uh, that we want to talk about today. How do you do this? How do you really reclaim yourself and realize I'm more than just that what was done to me? And what do you need to remember about yourself and see inside of yourself that is not that what you were maybe treated as or seen as by somebody else? I love to see that part that is victimized as a part of you, not as all of you. So try to imagine that, well, there is a part of you that you could say, well, there is a part that is uh, maybe the, the professional. There is a part that maybe the parent. There is a part that maybe the daughter. And there are all these different aspects of us that are at different times activated or taking over and, you know, basically let us just uh, move through those different situations in our lives in the best possible way. But none of those parts of us should be the one that is always running the show and always in control. So if you are saying, well, I have a part of me that is still really dealing and suffering from what happened to me, that victim part. But then there is also a part of me that can take care of that victim part, that can actually help that part to heal and to resolve the confusion and outgrow that what happened, then you automatically shift from feeling powerless to feeling more powerful. You are de-identifying yourself from the abuser and what the abuser did and really taking that stand and saying, I can be bigger than that. I can be better than that and I can help myself. I am not that powerless victim any longer. And we're going to talk more about how you can do that. And, and then the third step is about taking your power back. So taking your power back literally means that there is so much of you that seems to be still in the hands of the abuser. It can be a sense of worthiness. It can be a sense of self-reliance, of trust, of safety. It may be even a dignity sense or a purity or innocence. There is a lot that you may feel has been stolen away. And bringing this back, 
doesn't mean you have to go to the abuser and say, hey, by the way, I want this back. It is something that is actually not lost, but you have lost sight on it. Everything that you have been missing since the abuse is still inside of you. Even the most innocent aspect of yourself is still there. You have not lost yourself, but it's time to rediscover yourself. And we'll talk more about this after the break. <laughs> 